statistics, numerical data, frequency tables and histograms. Before we learned how to do a frequency table with categorical data, and it's the same with numerical data. Three columns, assuming you're using a tally table. The first, now we'll look at what the question was. Kyle asked 25 students how many children there were in their family. This is his data. So the first column gets the answer to the question that was asked. So we asked how many children, the responses will give me the number of children. I'll have to write kids to fit it in. And in order, we put from the bottom result we got up to the top. The lowest number was one, and we give every possibility up to the highest number of seven. The middle column is always a tally to help us get this right. And the end column is always the frequency, which is the number of people who gave that particular answer. So only one person said that there's seven kids in their family. That would be me. And so we know there'll be a frequency of one. One person had seven kids in their family. So we fill in the tally, being very careful that we don't miss anything. Two threes, two twos. Got to be quite careful. Oh, I already put the one in for the seven. Did I mess up somewhere? There's two sevens, there's a seven hiding over there. Good thing I do a tally. Now you'll see only one person had six. If nobody had six people in their family, then there would be nothing in there and we'd just put a zero in our frequency. But we'd still have to put it in, just in case it was there. And we wouldn't want to leave that out. We'd want to show in our results that no one had six people in their family. Count up the tally. So four people had only themselves, no sisters or brothers. And a really good check to do is just to quickly add these up because Kyle asked 25 students, so there should be 25 people here. That's 10 for 8 and 2, 4 and 5 and 1 is 10, that's 20, and 5. So if you get this right to the number that you should have, that's a probably a good sign you haven't missed anybody. Now we're asked to draw a histogram. There's differences in how we display numerical and categorical data. A histogram is very like the column graph that we drew for categorical data, but the only real difference is there's no gap between the columns for a histogram. There is a gap right at the start of half a column width. So I'm going to put the number of kids, the different responses down the bottom, and the frequency always goes up the side. The frequency has to go up to eight, so we try to fit one more. So I'll want nine centimeters, and I've got nine centimeters. Gradations on the grid lines. And again, we can call this frequency or we can call it number of people. And if we don't run out of space, we can always write it along the side, like this. And down here are our options for number of children. I need to go up to seven, and that probably means I want a centimeter for each option, that's seven centimeters, and a half centimeter before I start because we should have half a column width at the start so this will be my first column.
column one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you label them, if you can be very careful, in the middle. One kid, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These are actually the edges of the column. So if you want to put a little mark in the middle as well, we can come back and do that later. Then it's just how high we go for the frequency. Again, best off to use a pencil. Oh, we need to label number of children. And give it a title. And again, I didn't have enough space. We ask how many children are in the family. So the title is number of children in a family. Or in families. So with a pencil, in case you make a mistake with the columns, there were four people with only one child in the family. So neatly making my column and sorry about moving my paper there, the top. Now there's no gap. Five people had two children in the family. And you'll see that just joins on to the next column. Eight people had three. Be quite careful with your lines. We've got to be neat. You don't color in columns for a frequency histogram or anything like that. We just leave them as we've drawn them. Three people with four kids in the family. So we're going back to our frequency table every time. Five kids. There were two. Sometimes it can be easier to get your lines in and then go and do a little top. Six was one. Now, if it wasn't anyone at all, we'd just leave it there. But one person did come in on six. And seven was two. So you see how it can be easier to do all the lines first. But then we do get this problem here. Where I have to go back in. So however's easiest for you to do it. But that is a frequency histogram.